Ah, the speed testing strip. Here's the Kawasaki H2SX that I tested in the summer. And here's the legendary Honda Ruckus. Which begs the question, how much speed do you really need? And how good is the Honda Ruckus at commuting and off-roading regardless of top speed? How does it compare to the Metropolitan and perhaps its greatest rival, the Navi? And most importantly, why is it such a cult classic? For answers to these and many other questions, stay tuned because I tested the Ruckus in every environment and niche it was meant for, and I'll fill you in on the deets in this video. And as always, if you're enjoying the content, please consider subscribing, liking the video, and sharing it with someone who would be interested in the subject. Honda sells more motorized two-wheelers than any other company. By a lot. Like three times as many as their closest competitor. And most of those are not Goldwings and Africa Twins, they're mini motors and scooters, bikes that serve as more than just toys for rich riders, they serve as everyday transportation for most of the world. They're used for commuting, shopping, even family trips. So this segment is where the real sales are and where the brunt of Hondas slot in. Last year I made a shootout video after riding a bunch of Honda mini motos and scooters, check it out in the top right corner. But back to the Ruckus, a scooter that combines approachable power, incredible nimbleness and even some off-road ability in a pretty unique and attractive package. And it is these qualities that have made the Ruckus a cult classic among riders, especially ones that take pride in modifying and accessorizing their bikes. Whatever you can manage to dream up, someone has already done to a Ruckus. You've got your drag racers, your sidecars and your boulevard cruisers. There's probably $2 spent on ruckus accessories for every dollar spent on ruckuses. Ruckeye? Whatever. So what's the reason for this scooter's wild popularity? Well, it's not the specs. We're talking a 49cc liquid-cooled carbureted single with a staggering 4.4 horsepower and 3.35 pound-feet of torque. We're talking drum brakes, non-ABS and both hand-operated, CVT transmission and a speedometer. But hey, at 194 pounds it's light and very easy to ride, just twist and go, though big folks need not apply as max weight capacity is 220 pounds, that's a 200 pounder with 20 pounds of gear. Top speed, 60 kilometers per hour on a good day, that's about 37 miles per hour, even faster if you're going downhill. Uphill? Don't ask. Range is amazing with a full tank of 1.3 gallons or about 5 liters taking you over 140 miles or 225 kilometers. That's a crazy 114 miles per gallon or 45 kilometers per liter. That's something I can appreciate with current gas prices. And the seating position is comfortable enough to make use of that long range. However, for me the coolest thing is that it can go off-road. Yup, despite only having 1.9 inches of suspension travel up front and 2.6 in the rear, the Ruckus does quite well off the beaten path as long as it doesn't tackle extremely steep hills. So who is this bike for? Most obviously the commuter or shopper who doesn't want to spend a bundle on gas. If your commute to work is on slower streets, the Ruckus makes quite the nimble runabout. It's tiny, light, extremely maneuverable and easy to ride. Additionally, it's so small that city dwellers might be able to store it in their apartments like a bicycle. It's not too heavy for an elevator and takes up less space than many larger bikes. If you like to do track days, the Ruckus makes a perfect pit bike for getting around the area fast. And finally, if you want a scooter but will be off pavement for a significant portion of your riding, the Ruckus with its slightly off-road tires can chomp its way down a dirt or gravel road or through a field or forest. And yes, so can the ADV 150, but that scooter is a whole different price and weight range. The Ruckus costs 2,900 US dollars or 3,700 Canadian, which is relatively reasonable for a pretty versatile scooter. I would be remiss if I didn't mention one important detail. In many jurisdictions, a sub 50cc two-wheeler does not require a license to ride on the road, removing one of the major barriers that may keep people from buying one. Sadly, my home province of Ontario, Canada does require a full motorcycle license to operate this vehicle. The same license you need for operating this vehicle. Makes total sense. 
Governments really know what they're doing, don't they? As for the looks of this little beast, I like them a lot better than traditional scooters like the Metropolitan or the Giorno as it's called in Canada. The Ruckus is muscular and rugged looking and the signature dual headlight is instantly recognizable. Where the Metropolitan seems designed to appeal more to women riders, the Ruckus is unisex, cute yet cool at the same time. And as I've already mentioned, the Ruckus has a wild custom scene built around it. No other scooter has that kind of a community. So the Ruckus does have some attractive features. It's super light, very easy to ride, looks cool, is customizable and can do some light off-roading. It's also fairly reasonably priced. Weaknesses? There's no enclosed storage, so you can shove a bag into the space under the seat and hope it doesn't fall out. And like all 50cc bikes, it's slow. 60 km per hour on the flat, 35 to 40 up some of the steeper hills I rode. It's on par with other 50cc scooters in its class, but it's not necessarily competing just with other 50cc bikes. It's really quite a bit smaller and less expensive than a lot of the other mini motos and scooters Honda sells in North America. But it does have one major problem and that's the Honda Navi. The Navi is a 110cc motorcycle slash scooter hybrid that packs more power and tops out at 80 km per hour or 50 miles per hour and it costs 1100 US and 1400 Canadian dollars less than the Ruckus. Now it doesn't look as cool and is probably less worthy off-road, but it can carry a passenger and has a storage box. I reviewed the Navi last year at its launch and if you want to see that video, the link is in the top right corner. The big advantage the Ruckus has over the Navi is that in some countries or states it doesn't require a motorcycle license, but a license is cheaper to get than the price difference between the two bikes. So ironically, the biggest rival to the Ruckus may be another Honda, one that is slightly faster and more capable on pavement, and quite a bit less expensive. Honda has really gone all out with its Minimoto and Scooter lineup lately and it's hard to decide which ones are the best. Still, I get why riders are so fond of the Ruckus. There's a lot to like. Out of all the Honda Minimotos, I'd probably choose the Trail 125, though Honda does not import that bike to Canada. But if I didn't have a license and lived somewhere where I didn't need one to ride a sub 50cc bike, I'm taking the Ruckus all day, just because of its on and off road versatility and funky good looks. So which mini moto or scooter would you choose if you had to pick one? Honda certainly has some good choices, as do other manufacturers. Please leave your picks in the comments below and scoot on my friends. If you're interested in any of the gear that Brooke and I wear or use, or the camera equipment we use to film this channel, the links are below. Everything listed there was bought with our own money and we are not sponsored by any company. However, the links below are affiliate links and the channel is paid a small amount for referring you to shop at no additional cost to you. We do not recommend any products that we are not satisfied with ourselves, but we do strongly urge you to do your research and select the correct size for items like helmets and clothing. As always, thanks for watching, your support is greatly appreciated. Please hit that subscribe button, give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment below. And whatever you ride, enjoy it. Wave at other bikers no matter what they're riding, we're all part of a brotherhood and sisterhood. Keep the rubber side down, shiny side up and may the spokes be with you.